are you today? Beautiful another day. Let's stand as we get ready to sing our songs. We're going to start with Mighty to Save today. Mighty to Save. Love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find me. All my fears and failures Fill my life again I live my life to follow Everything I believe in Now I surrender Savior, He can move the mountain my God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. He can move the mountains, my God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save. Forever, author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Amen. Amen. All right. This is amazing grace. Amen. This is amazing grace. the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your life. That I would be set free. I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? 
who makes the orphan a son and daughter, the King of glory, the King of glory, who rules the nations with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of its brilliance, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace, this is unfailing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you laid down your life, that I would be I sing for all that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross, you laid down your life, that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Thank you. Please be seated. Well, we had a great time yesterday. So we set up, and we had people that showed up. I'm grateful for all those that came and volunteered, whether it was making coffee or helping with the backpacks or snow cones and popcorn or tacos. We, we didn't even begin to count. But I'll know that we, I know this, we ran out of tacos. We ran out of uh, 15 pounds of carne asada, I think, and 15 pounds of pollo. Gone. Okay? We had over 200 backpacks gone. I don't know how many snow cones and how much popcorn we served, but we served a lot. So we had a lot of people here, and I appreciate Liz and uh, Hermana Sandra from the Spanish church because they were the point people and were passing out New Testaments, and we had Sophia and Kobe and others that were handing out things and uh, the boys were helping too, so we appreciate all that because we got a lot taken care of. We, I think the last backpack went out a few minutes after 11 o'clock. So from 10 to 11, that's how it was efficient and they were going. I had four cases of children's New Testaments and we almost gave them all away. So I appreciate that. Now, here's the great thing. Pastor Gutierrez led a lady to Jesus Christ. So, amen? You say, well, where's the results? Where's the people that we gave backpacks to? We planted the seed. And people know in our community that we care for our community and we want to reach into the schools. I got a great email from the principal and he said, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're handing out the backpack tickets and we uh, can't wait for the water bottles. We need them. So, here we go, right? Things that we want to do. So, if you get donated to that or if you volunteered for it or he prayed for it some of you i know we're praying thank you so much it was a great time 
be had for all. And that's what's important. Right? Amen? So answers to prayer. Answers to prayer. Who else has got an answer to prayer or praise the Lord today? Anybody? Answer to prayer, praise the Lord. Yes. God is good all the time. Amen. Amen for that. All right. Um, I finished the class at Set Free. I, I took eight lessons and made them go over three months. We only actually had th eight sessions, but it went that long because of things that Set Free does. And it gave me a better appreciation of them. You know, you see them come in for the services on Wednesday night, and then they go back to Oceanside. But to spend some time talking to them and teaching them and finding out some of their things in their lives, what a blessing to see how God is working in their lives, where they were at before they met Jesus and where they're at now. So that's powerful. That's awesome. Uh, I'll be going up today with my family. Uh, my mom's selling, celebrating her 89th birthday this week. And Jerry's going to be celebrating his 84th birthday this week, too. I've been telling everybody he's 85, but Jerry's celebrating his 84th. All right, any other answers to prayer? Praise the Lord. Kelly started working this week, so that's an answer to prayer. All right, anybody else? All right, so we'll go to our prayer time. If you flip the prayer sheet over, uh, we're praying for Jerry's son who's uh, not able to work right now because of a back injury. And we're praying for Tony and Gloria, that the Lord will be with them and give them health. And for Norma with cancer and Liz's uncle and Ziggy and his wife and Angel and Diane and Sharon and Bob, Isabel's husband. Uh, we don't have any news from Sharon. She's still hanging on. Um, and we want to continue to pray for Pastor Jeff Leto. Um, he is uh, in the hospital uh, with his, uh, the cancer has spread, and so we're praying for him. Uh, we're praying also for uh, Randy's friend Joe that has cancer. So if you'll pray for those. It seems like cancer is on the uptick, and so we really need to pray. I, I spoke to a lady in line. I saw her standing there and she said, because we were saying, please have your child present to get the backpack. And she said, well, my child's 14 and I forget what she said. And I, I started talking to her and she said, I'm not doing great. She said, I have cancer. And I said, well, what kind, if I may ask? And she told me. And so I said, can I take a few minutes to pray with you? And so I, pray, I prayed with her and she seemed to appreciate it. I told her my story and she seemed to appreciate it. You know, that's what we can do. For, we can offer people prayer, right? God listens to our prayer. Whether or not they're a Christian or not, we can pray for them. Amen? Because who knows that they might come to Jesus Christ. Because God will answer prayer. God does awesome things. And so we definitely want to pray for those with cancer. And continue to pray for the lost. Pray for those that receive New Testaments. I, I liked what Liz and, and Armana Sonder, where they were saying... You know, if, if you read this before you go to sleep or you read it when you get up in the morning, you'll be refreshed and you'll be happy. Isn't that what God's Word is supposed to do for us? Amen? So I will get out all the Bibles. Remember my, my, my slogan, I will bankrupt the church giving away Bibles. You remember that? So that means you better make sure that I have plenty of Bibles so we don't have to start selling off your chairs. Okay? <laughs> Almost got the mural done. I appreciate Bo and Amanda, and, and Bo's going back to work, so that's an answer to prayer, but appreciate them and their family. They almost got the mural done out here. So, um, But pray for work needs. We have some that need different jobs or need more hours, so we want to pray for them. Continue to pray for the war in Ukraine and what's happening there, especially our missionaries that are going in and out and dealing with helping there in the unspoken request. Is there any other requests today? We need to pray about. Yes, Darcy? Okay. Okay. 
So Jason Carlisle is probably in his 50s and COVID is really bad. That's Darcy's boss's son and uh, he's just having trouble with COVID. Um, so we want to pray for him. All right, anyone else? Jerry? Okay, with the flooding that's happened, yes. Yes. Okay. All right, so we'll definitely pray for what's going on in Kentucky with the aftermath of the flooding. Uh, know this, that already uh, the Southern Baptist re disaster relief have started going in to see what they can do. But we need to pray for families. I read of one family that mom and dad were rescued, but all four kids are gone. Two of them, they found their bodies and two are still missing, but we need to pray for the people who are affected. Yes, ma'am. All right, so David, who is that we're praying for with the hearing? Your sister for Suzette? All right, definitely want to pray for Suzette. Remind me at the end of the service, we'll gather around her and lay hands on her, okay? And pray for her. Remind me of that. I meant to tell you, Dwight texted me this morning. And remember he said that he was having problems with dizziness and hearing and sinus problems? The doctor said, do this procedure at home. He did it, and it's, he's better. He's better, so that's an answer to prayer. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer then. Thank you, Lord, for an uh, opportunity to be salt and light to our neighborhood. Lord, what a fantastic day yesterday. Uh, not only to, to do the backpack giveaway and to give food away and popcorn and snow cones and coffee, but Lord, just to hand out the word of God and to testify and to pray. Lord, we ask that you might help us to have more of that so that our community will know that we're a church, that we're not exclusives, but we are open to anybody and everybody at any time between the three churches, that we can meet their needs. We can, because Jesus can meet the needs. So thank you for that. Thank you for the answers to prayer with Dwight and with others, for these that are celebrating birthdays, uh, for work situations. Lord, we're thankful for that. We're thankful for uh, just how you're working. We ask that you might continue to work. We pray for those in Kentucky who are dealing with the aftermath of such terrible flooding, lives that have been lost, homes, families destroyed. We would pray that, Lord, those that go in, that are relief people that can share with them Jesus Christ and pray over them. We pray for this family that was here yesterday for the memorial service that you might be with them. Thank you for those that said that they had prayed the sinner's prayer with me. Lord, that they might consider following up and looking into what it means now, what they should do, what their life should be like. Lord, we are praying for those with cancer. Lord, how it's affected just all kinds of people, men and women, young and old, and how it's bringing some to the edge of death. Well, I pray that you might be with their families and you might give them strength and be with them through all of this. Lord, you can work a miracle. Or you can relieve them of the pain and suffering by taking them home to be with you. We pray for the lost. We pray that thanking you for the one that was saved. We pray thanking you, Lord, for what you did, uh, with the, what you're going to do with the Word of God. We know that the Word of God will not return void, but it will be implanted. If the boys and girls will read it and pay attention to it, they can find Jesus. We pray for families. Loved ones, moms, dads, brothers, sisters, children, grandchildren that need Jesus Christ. That we can be the testimony, we can share Jesus Christ with them. The Spirit will begin to work to soften their hearts and prepare them. They might come to Christ. Husbands and wives. We pray for the unspoken requests. We ask that you might move in a mighty way to answer those needs. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Young ladies and young men, we have a pretty good mix today. You guys are dismissed. Young ladies and young men.
All right, well, that's okay. We're going to, we missed the title, but it's in your bulletin. So you have a bulletin? Everybody have a bulletin? Anybody need a bulletin? All right, if you need a bulletin, Dave, anybody need one? Just put up your hand and you can see the title. Okay, Frank needs one. John, you got one over there? Okay. Sorry about that. I didn't copy everything correctly. It's just a couple of slides that are missing. Okay. Make you be waking up and pay attention. Might be some other things missing there. Okay. Ezra and Nehemiah are very interesting stories about cultural clash. Remember, we're talking about when cultures collide. And all the things that we've, we've looked at, Joseph living in, what, in Egypt with Potiphar's family and Pharaoh and everything that went on there. We talked about Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And we're going to talk about a man by the name of Nehemiah today. Nehemiah is an important man. He's a cupbearer to the king. And in that job, that means that he's like a personal butler, but he's also, he's going to taste whatever, the water, the wine, anything, to make sure that it's not poisonous before he passes it on. And he, it's a very important position, but he's not in Israel. He's in the Medo-Persian Empire, maybe somewhere in Iran. While he's there, he gets a burden from the Lord, and the Lord says, you need to go back to Jerusalem and you need to rebuild the walls. Now in my commentaries that I was looking at about rebuilding the walls, because the Babylonians had destroyed the walls, because God had allowed the Babylonians to judge Judah, okay? And so the walls had been destroyed, but Nehemiah is supposed to go back and rebuild the walls, and those walls stayed up until Jesus' time and until A.D. 70. But Somebody goes, well, why do they need walls? Well, walls sort of gives you security. Do you lock the doors at your home? Do you lock the windows at your home? Uh, I heard about a missionary in Tijuana, uh, Pastor Elmo, and, uh, at Centro Shalom, and he has uh, there four or five Rottweilers that run in their compound. They're real nice to the baby. He's got a little, a little adopted daughter, and, and they lick the baby's feet, and she loves it. But man, you don't want to try to go on that compound, and they don't know you. So we put up walls, we put up protections, and Nehemiah says, it's important for me to go back and rebuild the walls, to, to deal with this, to give security. It also controls who comes and goes out of the city, because things were going on in Jerusalem that shouldn't be going on. And so Nehemiah receives this task and he gets a commission from the king with an income to be able to do the job of rebuilding the walls. And it's not like a cinder block wall. All right, thank you. It's not like a cinder block wall. These are large stones. They take a lot of people to move. Maybe you're associated with a cinder block wall that doesn't have any rebar in it, and at the first sign of trouble, it just tips over, right? After all the earthquakes. If you're a cinder block wall person, I hope I'm not offending you today. But this wall is very important. So it's a commission from God. It's, it's a role from God that Nehemiah is tasked to do. It's his ministry calling, if you will. It's like starting a church or continuing a church or starting a missions uh, church somewhere, doing those things. And we're going to begin reading here in Nehemiah chapter 6 and verse 1. Now it happened when Sanballat, Tobiah, and Geshem the Arab, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall, so he did accomplish it. In spite of these guys giving him opposition all the way. They were writing letters. They were making accusations. They were laughing. When he first started building it, they said an animal could run through there and knock the wall over. But it sort of culminates in this chapter. When they heard that I'd rebuilt the wall and there was no breaks left in it, though at that time I had not hung the doors in the gates, that Sanballat and Geshem sent to me saying, Come, let us meet together among the villages in the plain of Ono. Now, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, 
but that sounds the best to me. Call it the city of oh no. My dad, I can remember hearing him preach out of this, and he would say, when they said, hey, let's meet together, all Nehemiah said was, well, we're, we're meeting in oh no. I'm not meeting in oh no. I refuse to go to oh no. Right? It's easy to understand. But they thought to do me harm. They wanted to meet, but I knew what was up. They wanted to do something to me. So I sent messengers to them saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. I have something of great importance that I have to finish. Why, would, why should the work cease while I leave it and go down to you? They sent me this message four times. I keep getting a phone call from a business that wants to replace my windows and doors. Have you ever gotten any of those phone calls? Okay. And I very nicely speak to them. I don't get angry. They say, is this the homeowner? Is this Mr. Walton Hatch? Yes, it is. How can I help you? Uh, we're with such and such a company. And I say, you know what? Thank you for the call. Please put my name on the do not call list and don't call me. I got like three calls on the same day, okay? They don't seem to want to give up. Well, these guys weren't giving up. They kept sending letters. Let's get together for coffee. Let's have a grill out. Let's get together and have some fun. Let's go play. Let's go bowling together, okay? I answered them in the same manner. I've got a job to do. Why should it cease for me to come over and see you? Then Sanballat sent his servant to me as before, the fifth time, with an open letter in his hand. So they've unrolled the scroll so everybody can read it. And it is written, it's reported among the nations, and Geshem says, that you and the Jews plan to rebel against the, against the empire. Therefore, according to these rumors, you are rebuilding the wall that you may be their king. And you've also appointed prophets to proclaim concerning you at Jerusalem, saying, There's a king in Judah! Now these matters will be reported to the king. Sort of blackmail. If you don't come and talk to me, if you don't come and deal with me, I'm going to send a letter and report you to the government. So come, therefore, and let us consult together. So I sent to him saying, No such things as you say are being done, but you invent them in your own heart. For they were all trying to make us afraid, saying, Their hands will be weakened in the work, and it will not be done. Now therefore, O Lord, O God, strengthen my hands. Give me strength to do the job. Afterward, I came to the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, and no, that's not the Deliah that used to come here to church, but that's the name that she has. The son of Mehetabel, who was a secret informer. And he said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple and let us close the doors of the temple, for they are coming to kill you. Indeed, at night they will come to kill you. So he went to this guy's house and the guy was a secret informer about him and he said, oh, you need to cower in fear because they're going to come and try to kill you. And I said, should such a man as I flee? And who is there who would, as, such as I who would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. And I perceived that God had not sent him at all but that he pronounced his prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. He's getting it from every side, isn't he? He's getting it from these guys that are writing letters and threatening blackmail. He's getting it from this informer, this turncoat that's saying, uh, you need to be afraid for your life. And there's prophets that are saying, uh, false prophets, that are saying, Nehemiah, what you're doing is wrong. What was Nehemiah's job? Rebuild the wall. Do the work of God. For this reason he was hired that I should be afraid and act that way and sin so they might have cause for an evil report. 
and that they might reproach me. And here's his prayer. My God, remember Tobiah and Sanballat according to these their works and the prophetess Noadiah and the rest of prophets who would have made me afraid. So the wall was finished on the 25th day of Elul in 52 days. And it happened when all our enemies heard of it and the nations around us saw these things. They were very disheartened in their own eyes for they perceived that this work was done by our God. Do you believe that God has work for us to do? Do you think that He's done with us? He's done with Hilltop Baptist. He's done with, with Set Free Southland. He's done with Torre Fuerte. No, He's not done. He's got a job that He's put before us. He's got a job He's put before me. We have to be very careful not to grow discouraged, not to step back from doing what God's called me to do. Now, Jerry, what day do we have coffee and prayer to meet people out in front of the church here? Monday morning at 7 a.m. Amen? Till 8.30. And then, uh, Joanna, what time do we Bible study at nine, at, in Mondays? What time is that? 9 o'clock. And I used to do another Bible study at noon at Potter Machinery. Now I've changed that to Tuesday. Pastor, don't you ever have a day off? Yeah, Fridays and Saturdays. Unless I'm here handing out backpacks. But... I get super discouraged after Sunday. Monday rolls around, and I'm like, ah. but standing out there, smiling at people, and we prayed, Mike and uh, uh, Jerry and I prayed, and we had all kinds of people. We had a family stopped, and then we had another lady and her son stopped, and had another guy stop. Just God is bringing people. And so we were interacting with them, and it encouraged me. And then the Bible study it encouraged me because I have to stay at the work. I've almost been here 15 years. I'm not planning on leaving. God can cause me to leave, but it's not what I'm going to do because we have work to do. Within five miles of our church is half a million people. Look around. Do we have that many people here today? Well, yeah, we have a pretty good group here today. But we don't have half a million people here, right? There's plenty of seats, right, Phil? There's a lot of seats there. We have a work to do to reach the people in our community with Jesus Christ. Whether it's through backpack giveaways or whether it's just talking to people when we come across them and tell them about Jesus Christ, evangelizing them, discipling them. We shouldn't let anything keep us from the work. We've got to keep going. Nothing will keep me from doing the work of the Lord because I know that the work of the Lord is important. You all know that I like cars. I like going to car shows. I like collecting. If you look in my office, a guy looked in there and he said, wow, is that all for donations? And I go, no, that's all for my grandson and I to play with. All the Tonkas, Ertles, Nylon, Hot Wheels, all that stuff's for us to play with later on, okay? Not after church, but as he gets older. I like to do that. I like to do models. But I have two models that my daughters gave me for Father's Day or my birthday when we were still living in Ohio almost 20 years ago. They, Dad, are you going to ever make those models? I think Ruth at one point started putting it together herself and said, help me with this, Dad. This is your model. Let's do it. Model making is fun, but to me it's not that important. I played a lot of video games. Okay? I'm not an expert. I just like to play it. But you know what I'd much rather do right now? Ezra's at home. I can get down. He wants to be on my back and ride the horsey around the living room. And he wants to go on walks. That's my 16-month-old grandson. I want to invest in him. Because we, we tend to find things that are important. And it's what is important to us that we think is important. Maybe we need to adjust some things in our own lives, realizing God wants us to do something. 
And you say, Pastor, you're doing a great job. You're doing all these things. I'm not the only minister here. Did you know that? All of you are called to be ministers too. Did you know that? Whatever God has for you. Maybe it's to be a parent. Maybe it's to be a grandparent. Maybe it's to mow the grass around here. Maybe it's to pray. Maybe it's to teach a class. The work of the Lord is of most importance. More than anything else. Now be careful what you label the work of the Lord. Make sure it's the work of the Lord. All right? I think God wants me to, to, to view all the seasons of friends so I can mark the episodes that people shouldn't watch on their device at home. And if I can have a recliner, that's a blessing. And air conditioning, and I just need to be that. Has God call, Are you sure God's called you to that? Nehemiah said this, remember? I sent messengers to them saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and go down to you? Now, I'm planning on taking a vacation and I will be gone one Sunday, August or September. But does that just mean we just close the doors and we don't have church? No. No. The work is supposed to go on. We may have something happen. We might have an activity plan. We might have a ministry event plan during that time. It should go on. Jesus said this, I must work the works of Him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. We used to sing a hymn. We'll work till Jesus comes. We'll work till Jesus comes. Some of you are near retirement age. Or you're already retired. Some of you are like, well, I'm counting the years until I get to retire. You never retire from being a believer in Jesus Christ. It's net, you, well, I, I, so I don't get to retire from telling anybody, I, I want Ezra to know Jesus Christ. I don't get to retire from prayer. You better not retire from prayer. Prayer is what helps you get through. Amen? The work that God has called us to do. Jesus said, I must do this. Jesus ministered for three years. And then he died on the cross and rose again. And then he commissioned the disciples to do the work. And this is what he said about that in John 14, 12 and 14. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, or she who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do. Because I go to my Father. Jesus fed the 5,000, right? May have been 15,000 there. But they weren't all followers. In one day after Peter preached and God moved, 3,000 people were baptized. And soon after that, even more people were baptized. And the church just took off. Greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Greater thing. Jesus only had the gospel in Judea, Samaria, and Judah, or Judea. He didn't take it out of that, Galilee, okay? But the gospel spread. It went into Europe, it went into Asia, it went into Africa, and today the gospel is around the world, amen? Because of what the Lord wants us to do. The work is important. What does churches do that's of importance? Well, we tell people about Jesus Christ, and that's a big help. Help them get out of sin, help them get out of addictions, disciple them. That's what's important. 
Well, I think churches ought to do this and do that and do this. If it's what God has called us to do. The book, The Purpose Driven Church and the Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren states, and this is out of Acts chapter 2. Churches ought to have evangelism. Churches ought to have discipleship. Churches ought to have ministry. Churches ought to have fellowship. And churches ought to have worship. And I don't mean Sunday morning worship. I mean worship all the time, everywhere. Those things are important for our church to have. That's what God's called us to do. All right? Nothing will keep me from doing the word of the Lord because I know that Satan wants to stop the work of the Lord. Satan doesn't want God's work to be done because God is the creator and the sustainer and God is the one who wants to rebuild people's lives when they come to Him. And what is Satan? He's the destroyer. He's the destroyer of things. And so know this. If God blesses us and we have a good ministry, we have a great time out here uh, giving out backpacks and feeding people, that Satan might come against us and have something going because he, doesn't want, he wants to see us close up and just huddle up here and not do anything. I had a couple of complaints. People complained a little bit yesterday. It doesn't say that our kids have to be here. Well, I'm not going to give you 25 backpacks because you say you have 25 kids. Your kids need to be here. I want to see them. Well, how about this? How about that? And I've got this complaint. I wanted you to say, look, it's free. But I just said, well, I'm sorry. And can I, look? Can I change? One little girl got a dark blue backpack and her parents said can she get a different color and I said well what color would she like and she went so I said well does she want a gray one does she want a black one and about that time Sophia came out with a red one and she said I want that one and so we traded it but see, Satan could have driven a wedge in there and had that family go away angry Well, they'll never consider. Because that's what he likes to do. Okay? He wants to destroy. Um, they thought to do me harm. He didn't want to go meet with them because he knew he was going to get a mugging. He was going to have a beat down. He was going to be maybe even killed. He said, no, no, I'm not putting my life in your hands because you guys have been a, a, after me from the get-go. I refuse to go. Remember, the Bible tells us that Satan walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And we have to put on the armor of God. I have a brother that he started reading the armor of God passage every morning before he went to work. Ephesians chapter 6. Put on the whole armor of God that you may stand. And he goes, Pastor, since I started reading that every day, all kinds of things have come up against me. And there's been all kinds of problems. And I said, what do you think you put the armor on for? Right? If I'm going to go play football and I put all those pads on and that uniform, I don't like sitting on the bench. I want to play. Put me in the game, coach. I'm ready to play. If you put on the armor of God, that's why we're given the armor of God because there are going to be those that think to do us harm. There are the, going to be Satan's minions who are throwing fiery darts, who are using their wiles, their, their powers to come against the church and against the work we're trying to do. The wicked in Psalm 37, 12 the wicked plots against the just, the one that tries to live the life honoring God and gnashes at him with his teeth. I was talking to my fellow pastor about a situation in their church and he said we may have protesters out in front of our church Sunday because they don't like a decision we made. And it's been noised abroad throughout their community and so... Um, and I said, well, what are you guys going to do? And he goes, well, we're going to take out coffee and donuts and offer to pray. Why not? Why not? Well, you think 
you know, God's work is important. God's work needs to be done. And Satan plots. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 says this, For to this end I also wrote, that I might put you to the test, whether you are obedient in all things. Are you going to do what God told you to do? Now whom you forgive anything, I also forgive. For if need I have forgiven anything, I have forgiven that one for the sakes in the presence of Christ. Dealing with forgiveness, lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Other passages say that Satan can masquerade as an angel of light. Satan has had been dealing with humans since the very beginning. Eve on. And he knows a lot of dirty tricks. And he'll do horrible things. And he doesn't want to see God's work accomplished. Sometimes you see somebody, uh, and Francisco will tell you this, and they're struggling with their addiction, and they've been to the ranch, and they've gotten things right in their life, and they're living in the home, and that ugly monster raises its head again, and they have that urge to fall and go back into their addiction. Because Satan doesn't want to see him made whole. Satan doesn't want him to see him be a new cre creation in Jesus Christ. He wants to destroy their life again. Are we ignorant of his devices? He'll use... Hmm. I, I'm a Western novel reader. Now please don't inundate me with your old collection of Louis L'Amour uh, softback books. I like Zane Gray. I do like Louis L'Amour. But in it, there's always a fight. And some guys, they fight by the... I forget what it's called, but it's the Queensbury rule book or something where they supposed to fight that way other people say i fight to win whatever steps i have to take i, I don't care i'm going to fight to win now i'm not a fighter okay I, i'm not a fighter but if i'm up against satan i know that he's going to pull every dirty trick that he can to try to stop us from doing what we need to do i'm not ignorant of his devices and so i need to stand firm in the power of the Lord and in the Holy Spirit's power and we need to stand up against it and say we're not giving in. We're not giving in. Nothing will keep me from doing the work of the Lord because I know that God will help me do it. I know that God will help me. I found a lot of times in my own family and with others that if I tell them to do something or ask them to do it, maybe they don't want to quite do it but if I offer to be right there and help do it please know this if I ask you to do something around the church I won't ask you to do anything that I'm not willing to do myself if I ask you to take trash to the dumpster I'm willing to take trash to the dumpster too you say pastor I don't think I can handle this you can ask Phil we've had some trash cans that have been pretty heavy after yard work and I've said Phil I know Gladys will be upset if you go home and have a hurt back so I will help you empty that right we come alongside one another and help each other in dealing with things like that, okay? God will come alongside us and help us. Remember I said we need to make sure that what we're doing is God's work? God won't help us do it if it's not God's work. If it's just something we got a great idea about that'll make us feel warm and fuzzy, God's not going to help us do it. But if it's what He needs done, He will help us. Nehemiah said this, in verse 9 of that passage, Now therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. Help me. I want to do this. I'm determined to do it. And they finished it in 52 days. I have a friend that I've helped to do some little work around his house. And they had a problem with their kitchen sink. They live in a condo out in Eastlake. And they discovered there was a leak and it had destroyed the cabinet bases and it had destroyed all the flooring underneath. And so their insurance company, the homeowner's insurance, said, we'll cover it. And then calling and getting a hold of somebody to come and do the work. And they've been several months with only half a kitchen. Stuff piled up on the table. And they can't cook. He goes, we've eaten a lot of meals that we bring to the house because we just can't cook 
Uh, some of you have been through situations like that, right? Where it's taken forever to get that remodel done or to have even maybe one guy started and somebody else had to finish it. God may have a long-term thing. When is our work here done at Hilltop Baptist Church? When will we ever see the last person saved that's supposed to be saved? When God takes us away. When we return to Him, we go to glory. When He comes back and takes us away. The work doesn't stop. God, you're going to have to help us. You're going to have to strengthen our hands. David said this in Psalm 139, I will praise you with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing praises to you. I will worship towards your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. In the day when I cried out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul to do the work, to do what I'm supposed to do. You strengthened me. How many of you through COVID season have been taking a bunch of vitamin C and vitamin D? It's okay, you can admit to it. Anybody? Okay, some of you have. As believers, we need to take a bunch of Holy Bible vitamin B. Okay? We need to get into the Word and be reading the Word and we need the Holy Spirit to help us. Amen? And we need to meet together in church so we can be uh, encouraged and enthused and do you raising kids that's a job right now that's God's work to raise yep raise up your children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord amen so if you have already raised your kids maybe you're helping with grandkids but how about praying for families you see them you know who they are Pray for them that they can have a, a, a good ability to raise their children in following Jesus Christ. That's your job, parents. Do you need strength to do it? Amen. Amen. My daughters are all grown, but I still need strength to deal with them. And they need strength to deal with me, right? But we need to have the Lord's strength to go through what God has called us to do. When I cried out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. And many of you could quote this verse with me. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things. The verse doesn't stop there though, does it? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If you read Paul's testimony and know exactly what all he went through, even in the silly city of Philippi where he's writing to, remember he cast a demon out of a young lady and her owners had him beaten and thrown into prison? And at midnight in his pain, he was singing praises and, wonder, and praising God and praying and then he won the jailer to Christ and his whole family. He said, I've been beaten, I've been shipwrecked, I've been left for dead. All these things have happened to me. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's what keeps us going. That's what enables us to do what we're supposed to do. The work that God has called us to do. So I know that the work of God, the Lord is important. Amen? I know that it's important. I know that Satan wants to stop us from doing it. Be aware of that. Okay? And I know that God will help me to do it. He'll strengthen me and help me to do the work. So therefore, I will not stop doing the work of the Lord. You're called to do it individually. You're called to do it as a family. And we're called to do it as a church. We can't afford to stop. We can't quit. We've got to keep going. Doing the work of of the Lord. Let's bow our heads for just a moment. Maybe you're here today and you're discouraged. Maybe you're here today and you feel like it's, you're struggling. You're struggling being a parent. You're struggling being a grandparent. You're struggling with reaching your family for Christ. You're struggling with just things that are happening. 
Know that you have someone who is in opposition against you. That's Satan. He doesn't want your wife to come to Christ. He doesn't want your husband to come to Christ. He doesn't want your children, your parents, your brothers and sisters to come to Christ. And he's going to do whatever he can to keep them from finding Jesus Christ. But you need to pray and say, Lord, help me to have strength and help me to know that you will answer prayer and you will do this. My family can come to Jesus Christ. Just keep praying and keep working. Show them love. The Bible says it may be through the love and respect of the spouse that they might, may come to Jesus Christ. Pastor, you don't know my kids. <laughs> you don't know what they're facing. I pray for you that have kids that are not in middle school or high school yet because they're going to go through some tough things. Keep going. Don't be discouraged. Don't let them loose. Hold on to them tight in prayer. I, I, you might want to be on your face every day praying for your daughters, your sons, that they will grow up in the nurture and admission of the Lord and help you be the right parent. We're praying for our church that we can reach this community for Jesus Christ. Somebody got saved yesterday. We had people that said they prayed the sinner's prayer in the memorial service yesterday afternoon. That's what we need. We need to disciple them. Okay, come back to church. Come and meet Jesus. Come get to know Him. Let's not stop. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you may be sort of confused listening to this. Remember this. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you don't have to be a member here. You don't have to be baptized. What you need to do is admit that you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus died for you. Confess your sins and say, I want Him to come into my life and be my Lord. It's as simple as that. If you want to know more about that, I'd be happy to talk to you after the service and share Jesus Christ with you if you want to make a decision. But for the rest of us that are believers in Jesus Christ, I want to pray for you, pray for our church, that we will be strengthened and we'll keep doing the work of the Lord. We won't quit. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come humbly before you because the task you've given us, you've given me, is of great importance to be known that we're chosen to spread the best news the world has ever heard. Lord, what a great honor. Help us not to give up on it. It may seem like our family members aren't willing to listen, our friends are not willing to listen, but help us not to give up on the work of evangelism, discipleship, ministry. Help us to keep pressing forward, doing what you've called us to do. Help us to make sure it's of you first, but help us to keep doing what you've called us to do. And Lord, help us to stand strong against the devil when he comes against us, that we'll know what he's up to, and that we'll look to you for even greater strength and more resolve and say, I am not going to quit. I'm not going to back down. Lord, I thank you for the word of God that helps us to have uh, to know that we can keep going forward and keep pressing forward and that you'll do great things. But Lord, it's all about you. The one that was saved yesterday, those that prayed the sinner's prayer, those that may be reading the Testament, it's all about you. It's not about us. It's all about you. We give you the honor and glory and praise. But Lord, help us to keep going. If there's anyone here today that doesn't know you, I pray that they might be interested in knowing more about salvation. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Just a couple of announcements. Today in the bulletin, if you will stop, Darcy should be in here directly. But if you want to send a card to Wanda Tribble, I was talking with Linda about Wanda, and she has times of coherence and times of not so coherence. So if you will uh, consider stopping at the back and getting her address and getting a card just to send her to encourage her praying for whatever, okay? Uh, we will have coffee and prayer tomorrow here for the community at 7.15. We're adjusting our time a little bit because the high school doesn't start until 8.30 now. So it throws everything differently. Also, Bible studies. If you want to join the Zoom Bible study, um, that just the name of what it is online. Um, you're welcome to talk to Darcy. I don't believe we're doing it. Is, are we doing it today, Dave? 
You are doing it. Okay. So uh, see Darcy about signing up for that if you're interested in that. Uh, Nine o'clock for those of you that want to come on Monday. And then Wednesday night again. Um, We will have some things coming up. They're just not in the bulletin, but we'll let you know. Okay? We may yet need to still put some more backpacks together uh, for some that weren't able to come yesterday that I know about. Um, We're bringing water bottles in this week to take to the school, refillable ones that they need. So uh, we'll just keep going. Amen? We're not quitting. We're not giving up. Um, Brother Elmo from Central Shalom. The money that came from the yard sale, remember those two giant yard sales we had? They, he said, our keyboard just died. Is it okay if I buy a new keyboard? And I go, do whatever you need to do with that money. So he did. He bought a brand new keyboard for their church. So it was a blessing, all right, all the work that we did. Uh, he's now saying, boy, it'd be great to have a popcorn machine. And I'm like, well, we could sell the rest of the stuff and come up with a popcorn machine. We'll do what we got to do for you guys to do stuff there south of the border. All right. So we're going to sing at Calvary. So if you